Are you looking for a way to convince your seller what the realistic price of their property is? Today I'm going to give you a couple of tips. What's up everybody? Ricky Kruth here. Welcome back to my channel. Good to have you back. If you're new here, welcome. You can go ahead and click subscribe and hit the bell because I'm putting out the very best content for real estate agents out there on YouTube, on Facebook, podcasts, everywhere. Also, we have the fastest growing real estate coaching program in the world. It's zero to diamond.com, completely free. It's the very first completely free real estate coaching program, so definitely take advantage of it. Um, it's basically step by step exactly how I've built my business over the last 17 years and I've become the number one REMAX agent in the state of Alabama selling over 100 properties per year since 2014 as a single agent and I'm still selling. I'm still crushing the game. A couple weeks ago, I sold six properties. Last week, I sold three properties. This week, I got two under contract and I'm working on two more, so hopefully I'm gonna have four. I'm trying to nail four contracts a week this year. That's my goal. So it's a really hefty goal because not only am I trying to sell for a week, but I'm also speaking internationally all over the world and I'm spreading my message of relationships over transactions. That business is 110% unlimited for every agent. Competition doesn't exist. Closings happen every day regardless of market conditions. So there's enough for everybody. Um, I just want to share and hopefully you get just one or two things out of what I'm teaching and giving to you for no cost and get out there and crush it. I want you to get out there and succeed. What can you do for me? I just want to see you succeed. I want to get a message from you saying that I started using your strategies and now it's really happening for me. I'm picking up listings, I'm picking up new clients, I'm really creating those relationships because that's what it's all about is relationships. I could really care less necessarily about a transaction over a relationship. It's the other way around for me. So it took me almost a decade to learn this. It took me about eight years in the business, losing everything in the crash to realize this. But once I did, everything started happening for me. From that point, it took me six more years to get to 100 deals. But hey, here I am, right? Nothing happens overnight. You got to put the work in. And that's the part of the puzzle people don't realize. They see me and they think, Ricky, you know, you're selling 100 properties. I want to sell 100 properties. Great. Put that 15 hours a day in for six years. And I think if you do exactly what I tell you to do, I think you can get there. People don't want to put that work in. That's the biggest problem I see out there. They want everything right now. And I had the same problem. Patience was a big problem for me as well, but I've learned to control it. I understand that patience is a big part of the game. You put the work in, you put the work in, you put the work in, you be patient. And, you know, I'm just, I'm trying to get a little better every day. Just a little better, a little better, trying to figure out better ways to serve my clients in real estate, trying to find better ways to help you become a better real estate agent and, you know, uh, figure out ways to become better in my health, uh, with my faith, with my family, trying to get better in all aspects of life. That way I can achieve true happiness. And I'll tell you right now, I'll sleep really good at night, extremely well, because I know I give it everything that I have from sun up to sundown and beyond. If you guys need anything whatsoever before I get into today's video about how to negotiate a price with a seller when you're at a listing appointment, hit me up on Instagram, okay? I'm answering every single DM. It's at Ricky Carruth. Just go there, follow me, hit me up with a message and let me know what in the world I can do to help you. So we've all been in this situation with the seller, okay? We're at a listing appointment and we're trying to negotiate the price with the seller and you're, you're looking at the comps, you've seen the property, um, you're, you're, everything's right there on the table, you know what the property is worth roundabout, what it's going to appraise for, so on and so forth. And the seller, they just want a little bit more. They want about 10% more, they want to price it a little higher. They always, don't they? Don't they just always want to price it just a little bit higher than what you suggest or what you say? It needs to be priced at. Of course, um, who wouldn't? 
Every seller thinks their property is the nicest one in the neighborhood, or it has this and it has that, and this is why it's worth more. Every single one of them. So at the end of the day, before I get into how to actually try to get them down to, to the realistic price, um, you always want to discuss why they're selling and find out what that motivation is behind them trying to sell this property because there's something bigger going on in their life other than just the deal, right? Their mom died, their kids went to college, they got a new job, they're relocating, this is an investment, whatever the case may be, we need to understand what that bigger reason is so that we can A, deeper connect with the prospect and B, try to really figure out how we can actually help them. Because when you figure out how to help them with their bigger goals, with why they're selling, that's when you really are helping people. And you have your eyes on not just the deal, but the relationship. And when you do that, people appreciate that. People realize that. People know that you're there to care for them what their actual needs are other than just selling the property. And that's when we run into these lifelong clients that will never use another agent. Okay, so when we're at the table, we're trying to negotiate the price with the seller. Let's throw some numbers out there, just hypothetical numbers. Let's say, you know, the property's worth maybe 290, okay? And, you know, it will probably be a good asking price to ask 2999 or 295 or something right under 300. Okay? But they want to ask 309. Okay? Or maybe they want to ask 350. Okay? Or 325 or something like that. Um, but nothing is sold over 300, right? Nothing is sold over 300. And not to say that you're the real estate god. I've talked about this before. You know, you may price it higher and a buyer come in and buy that property. Who knows? But at the end of the day, we have to go by what we have in front of us and what the numbers are. And the numbers are telling us it's 290, okay? Around that number. So 299.9 is what we're, what we're wanting to list it at okay or somewhere around there and the reason I want to go there is because I want to capture everybody searching under 300 okay and so this is the conversation that I start to have with my seller you know I start to tell my seller about the fact that you're gonna lose lots of showings because people are gonna be looking for this particular kind of property under 300 so when they search in all the different search engines online and they search up to 300. If you're over 300, you're going to miss all those potential buyers. Okay, you're going to miss all those potential buyers. So that's mistake number one. Okay, here's here's another angle that the seller tries to take. They try to say that we can price it higher and have wiggle room. You know, just get an offer. Well, the problem is the buyer doesn't want to insult the seller. Most cases when the the seller's asking too much. And the seller's thinking, why haven't we got an offer yet? You know, Well, the problem is, is the buyers see that you're asking too much and they feel like you're very proud of this property that's overpriced and they don't want to hurt your feelings. They don't want to insult you, right? They feel like it's a waste of time and buyers don't want to waste their time if they don't have to. Okay, so it's harder to get an offer when you're overpriced. You can't even get an offer going. It's really difficult. So we need to be priced right. $299. Okay, now the seller says we'll price it higher and have a lot of wiggle room. Bad strategy. Okay, it's better to be priced closer to where you need to be and be a little more firm. Okay, it's price, it's better to be priced a little closer to what you'll take and be more firm. That way we can get them in the door. Once we get the buyers in the door and they see it and we can find that buyer that becomes emotionally attached, emotionally attached to the property, now the price doesn't matter. They just want the property. And we priced it right, so it's we're gonna sell it now. Okay, rather than having it at 309, not getting anybody in the door, not finding the buyer that's gonna be emotionally attached, and then when we do, they're still scared to make an offer because they don't want to insult the, the seller. Okay, it's just bad strategy all around. It's better to be priced closer to what you'll take and be more firm. Okay, another thing, the very first day it's on the market is the most important day. That's when the most eyeballs are gonna hit that listing. And if you're not priced right, if your pictures aren't right, if your remarks aren't right, if everything isn't right, then they're just gonna move right past that listing, okay? 
And then later on, you know, a lot of sellers say, well, we can reduce it later. Bad strategy because you, you miss those new listing eyeballs. And then later when you reduce it, now you're, you've lost all that momentum and now we're backtracking. And now the market can feel that we're getting a little desperate. Okay, like we did make a mistake. Okay, because that's what it is, a mistake. So I want you to maybe watch this video again, maybe take notes and try to, and try to incorporate some of this language uh, when you're talking to your sellers. And another thing that you can talk to your sellers about uh, whenever you're telling them what the realistic price is, and I have this conversation all the time, you know, when I'm telling them the realistic price and they're like, uh, it seems a little low, I know in the back of my mind that they might be talking to other agents, okay? Or they may, they may try to get a second opinion, thinking that I was trying to lowball them a little bit. But what I do like to say is, is, look, it doesn't matter to me if you list this property or not. I'm not here for that. What I'm here to do is to give you the exact realistic idea of what this property is worth so that you can make real life decisions based on the realistic price. Okay, I'm not going to be like other agents that might give you an inflated price and now you're making decisions based on this inflated price because this agent told you you could get a, a better price. Okay, now you're making decisions based on false reality. Okay, and then that, that can get you in trouble because now you had all this stuff in your head about how you're going to handle all these situations, but it was all based on a price that you'll never get. Okay, so I, I like to tell them to be very careful talking to other agents who'd give them higher prices because that agent is just trying to get a listing, which I'm not trying to do. I'm not trying to get a listing. I'm trying to consult you the best way I can based on why you want to sell and the realistic price of the market. Mr. Seller, I want you to be in control. I want you to be completely comfortable. You know what the realistic value is because I'm telling you, but if you understand what's going to happen if you price it higher and you still want to do that, I'm all about it. I will price it at the higher price. I will market it at the higher price if that's what you want to do based on the fact that you know you're going to get very less showings. Buyers are not going to want to make offers because they're not going to want to insult you, so on and so forth. And you can cancel my listing agreement at any time. You can cancel it tomorrow, next week, next month. I do not hold you to a listing agreement at all. This is an easy in, easy out situation. And like I said, I'm just here to help you accomplish whatever it is that you're trying to do. So like I said, go back and watch this video again. I think there was a lot of nuggets thrown in there. Um, this is literally the same conversations I have with sellers all the time. And I wanted to share it with you here. I hope it really, really helps you dial in your, your strategy with how to get listings priced right. Another thing is days on the market for other, other properties. You know, when, when you have the comp sitting there and the, the price that they want on another property that's been sitting there for 250 days, it's real easy to say, hey, do you want your property to sit on the market for 250 days? No, I don't, Ricky. Okay, well, here's the evidence that we need to be high, uh, lower, right? So there's a lot of things going on and uh, I just hope this video helps. So like I said from the beginning, if you guys need anything at all, Instagram is the best place to reach me. Just DM me there. Um, sign up for the free coaching if you have not already. Join the other 12,000 agents as of today that are in the program and growing so fast. I'm so proud of our Zero Diamond members that are out there crushing it, that are pushing the, the relationships over transaction philosophy and really burning it up and crushing it and getting listings and creating a real business that's going to survive market crashes and dominate their markets and, and enable them to live the life that they want to live and achieve their goals and, and all the above. It's a super humbling experience for me, to be honest with you, but um, you guys are pushing me to continue going. So give me a like on this video. Shoot me a comment. Let me know what you think. We'll talk to you soon.